Welcome to Electron Online and here's another straightforward example of how to use Faraday's law to figure out the EMF induced in a loop conductor when either the area of the loop is changing or the strength of magnetic field is changing. In this case, the strength of magnetic field is staying uniform and constant. It's the area of the loop is changing. It changes from an area of one square meter to an area of five square meters in 0.2 seconds. Well, if the area changes, the magnetic field stays the same. What that means is that the flux to the loop is changing as well. If the area is increasing, then the flux to the loop is increasing. And if the flux to the loop is increasing, then there must be an EMF induced. All right, so let's imagine what we have here. We have a loop made out of a conductor in a magnetic field. There's our magnetic field. The strength of the magnetic field is equal to 2.5 teslas and the area initially of the loop is equal to one meter squared. And then we expand the loop quickly so that now the area is five square meters. So area final equals five meters squared and the time elapsed is equal to 0.2 seconds. So how do we find the EMF induced? So EMF induced is equal to question mark. That's what we're finding. And of course, using uh, Faraday's law, we can write that the EMF induced is equal to minus the change in the flux over time. It's the change in the magnetic flux. And of course, the magnetic flux is simply the product of the magnetic field times the area. Now, as long as it's perpendicular, we don't have to worry about the cosine of the angle between them. So this is equal to minus the change in the B times A over time. And in this case, the magnetic field is not changing, so we can move the magnetic field out. So this is equal to minus B times the change in the area over time. And that we know, it went from one square meter to five square meters in 0.2 seconds. So this is equal to minus B times uh, 5 meters squared minus 1 meter squared, which is a change in the area over the 0.2 seconds. And then, of course, the B field was 2.5 teslas, so this is equal to minus 2.5 teslas times 4 meters squared divided by 0.2 seconds. All right, that would be uh, 4 divided by 0.2, that is uh, 5 times 4 is 20, times uh, 2.5, which is 50, so this is equal to minus 50 volts. Again, Tesla meter squared per second is indeed volts. So in this case, the EMF induced in this uh, conductor, which is changing in size from one square meter to five square meters, you'll have an EMF induced for of 50 volts for a period of 0.2 seconds. It's a lot of volts. Of course, that's a very quick change of the area with the um, magnetic field being fairly strong. Now, let's say instead of a single loop, we had a conductor which was looped a multiple number of times. So let's change the problem just a little bit. If we now had a conductor which had a bunch of loops like this, and let's say that n equals 10. So how does that change the equation? Well, in that case, the EMF induced would be 10 times that amount. So it would be 10 times this, it would be 10 times the area, so the area times 10, and so it would be times 10, times 10, and finally times 10, so that would be minus 500 volts. So you can see you can really increase the uh, amount of EMF induced by having multiple loops made out of the same conductor so that when the area changes or when the B field changes, the magnetic field changes over time, the effect the EMF induced will be much, much larger by a factor of how many loops you have. So there is another interesting part of Faraday's law. Okay, so now the next example we're going to try and show you is when the loop actually turns on its axis so that the area is constantly increasing and decreasing and de increasing and decreasing as it changes as it as it turns on its axis and let's see how the emf induced looks like then 